So everything you need to know about trigeminal neuralgia. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray Drury uh, with the Upper Cervical Spine Center. And uh, today I'd like to talk to you about TN, the suicide disease, right? Uh, if you um, have trigeminal neuralgia, you know very well what I'm talking about. Um, so where does tri what is trigeminal neuralgia? Let's start there. So the, T, the trigeminal nerve is a cranial nerve. It comes off the brain stem down in the neck. It goes back up into the face, and then it splits off into three branches, right? The trigeminal nerve. One that goes across the forehead, one across the face, and one under down around the chin. Now, the trigeminal neuralgia itself, the pain can affect any one of the three or any combination or all three. And it is, uh, they call it the suicide disease because it used to, it's like the most painful pain known to man. I've heard it, people say it's like someone stabbing you in the face with an ice pick. I've heard it's like chewing on aluminum foil. Uh, I've heard some horrific explanations from our patients. So the typical, what is the medical approach? Well, the medical approach is basically drugs and surgery. Those are the only two weapons that medicine has. Uh, the drugs typically prescribed are anticonvulsants, anticonvulsants like seizure medications, uh, like uh, Topamax, Dilantin, um, Tegretol. So these things, these obviously are seizure medications, but it's been known to knock the edge off for a little bit. I have people that, uh, you know, typically you'll start off with a smaller dose and you have to keep up and get the body gets immune to it. And uh, it just kind of takes the edge off, if that. Uh, for some people, the medications have done that don't do not have much effect. At the same time, they make you dizzy, they make you confused. You're not supposed to drive when you take them, so it can be the medication itself can be debilitating. The surgical approach uh, is uh, to go in and do an incision, put a hole in the skull. Uh, they wrap a little Teflon thing around the trigeminal nerve, uh, and uh, the statistics on their websites say it's pretty good, but I've had multiple patients that have had this procedure and had no results. Uh, some even were worse after the surgery. Uh, so the, the other thing is, is, you know, the way you're, you were not born with a Teflon deficiency. Okay. There's a reason why you have trigeminal neuralgia there for every effect in the universe, there's a cause and the cause of trigeminal neuralgia is not a drug deficiency or lack of Teflon coating around the nerve. So where does trigeminal neuralgia come from? Well, so from my experience, uh, we've had patients come here from all over the United States literally all over the world from as far away as China to get relief for their trigeminal neuralgia. And what we've found is if one of the bones at the top of the neck is out of a line, that's where the trigeminal nerve inserts into the brain stem and sends its messages to the brain. So what happens is, is the trigeminal nerve is a, a, a sensory nerve. So it sends messages of sensation from the face to the brain. And in the case of trigeminal neuralgia, there's nothing wrong with the face. The face is perfectly fine. But somewhere between the face and the brain, there's a message that gets interpreted as pain that ends up at the brain. Now, how can that happen? Well, somewhere between the nerve react, sensation, which is in the face, and the message, there's only one place that that nerve can really be interfered with, and that's at the brain stem. If one of the bones here is out of the line, it quite literally interferes with the normal transmission from the face to the brain. So like stepping on a garden hose, it can actually alter the sensation to the brain, telling the brain that there is pain in the face when there's really nothing there creating the pain. But the pain is what the brain senses. Okay, so what we have found is that we can find that misalignment and if we can just so simply just literally move the bone back where it's supposed to be, taking the pressure off of where the nerve inserts to the brain stem, then the normal message no pain in the face, gets to the brain unimpeded, unaltered, taking away the sensation of pain. Okay, so <clears throat> where does it come from? How does that bone get out of a line? Well, some sort of a trauma. It could have been months ago, years ago, decades ago. It could have been birth. We don't know. Uh, looking at x-rays, we can give you a pretty good time frame, but if, the, if you had some sort of trauma, could have been a car wreck, could have been a fall, could have been uh, a slap upside the head, uh, 
a sports injury. There's so many different ways one of those little bones can move just enough. Now the brain still doesn't have any pain perception, so you don't have to have neck pain or headaches or anything like that, but it could be interfering with the message for years between your brain and your body to the point where eventually just start affecting the nerve at the, the trigeminal nerve. So there are things that make that misalignment worse over time and we're all exposed to stress, physical, chemical, emotional, and those stresses can actually make the misalignment worse. The body tenses and pulls and makes it worse and worse and worse to the point to where it starts to produce symptoms. So <clears throat> our approach as upper cervical chiropractors is to find that very specific minute misalignment that could be interfering with the messages to the brain from that face. We remove it, open the message up, then the brain starts to get the normal message. So if you're suffering from trigeminal neuralgia or you know someone that is, please do them a favor or yourself, find an upper cervical doctor near you. You can Google upper cervical chiropractor near me. If you live in the Charlotte area, South Carolina, Rock Hill, Fort Mill, um, Pineville Matthews, Lake Wiley, Lake Norman, Cornelius Huntersville. We are the upper cervical doctor for you. Just give our office a call at 704-588-5560. We never charge for the initial consultation to find out what your needs are. If we find you have a misalignment in your neck that's causing your trigeminal neuralgia, we will tell you and we'll tell you what we need to do to correct it. If we find that you do not, then we will try to find another specialist that we think that can help you. So you have nothing to lose. Um, if you have any questions, call our office. If you're having a hard time finding a doctor near you, call our office. We'll do what we can to try to help. So I hope this gives you some more information on your, on trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, and uh, if there's anything else we can do for you, we hope to see you, meet you one day. I hope you have a great afternoon. Goodbye.